a warm welcome to all the viewers of this session in this particular session we are going to discuss about the application layer and we'll focus mainly on the introduction part of it these are some of the some of the key points that you will be able to understand after completing this session you will be able to understand what are the different services that the application layer provides you will be able to understand what are the different functions of application layer presentation layer and session layer and how this all how, how all these functions work together in a network to provide the services to the end users also along with this you will be able to uh, enlist the different protocols that are used at the application layer these are some of the services and responsibilities that the application layer provides first thing to understand is the application layer is sits at the top of the stack of both the OSI model as well as the TCP IP model and it serves as a closest layer to the end user. It provides a kind of interface between the application that we use in our day to day life and the network over which the applications communicate. So whatever messages that we transmit from uh, over the network from one uh, end device to the other end device, how these messages come from one place to other place and how it is going to be displayed on the end user side. It's all the responsibility taken care of by the application layer and presentation layer. Session layer is just used to maintain the session of this communication uh, that we'll be discussing in the later half of the session. There are some of the protocols that are used uh, on the source and destination host to exchange data between the uh, programs or the processes that are running across it. About presentation layer, if we introduce it, it is a it has three basic pri or three primary functions. First is it performs the formats, it performs the uh, encryption, and it performs decryption. Also, it compresses the data or decompresses the data whenever it arrives at a destination or whenever it is going out of the destination. So, if, if, if uh, for example, if I have an image that is been retrieved from a server, then the image format is been taken care of by the presentation layer. And along with the image format, while transmitting the image, it is first com compressed and then uh, with compression it is encrypted in a specific for in a specific binary form and then it is transmitted at the end device where the, where the receiver is receiving the image the presentation layer again decrypts the message into the original form and then forwards it to the application layer so whatever graphical images or whatever display part of thing is used that is the responsibility of a presentation layer session layer is just used to maintain the dialogues between the source and destination application it actually handles the session through which the communication is taking place so until and unless the session is maintained communication can take place as soon as the session terminates communication will also stop so it keeps the uh, dialogue active till the session uh, time is maintained it also in, in other words we can say it maintains the state of communication so maintaining a state means uh, storing the session id of a particular session or a web browser and then uh, for that particular session we can transmit the data and then as soon as the user logs out of the uh, web page or the closes the session the session ID is destroyed and the communication can stop. So these are the three different layers which we uh, uh, which we just saw in very brief and uh, <coughs> the different responsibilities of it. This is how uh, the OSI model and a TCP IP model looks like. This is a kind of a relevance between the OSI and TCP application layer. So we can see that OSI model has seven layers and TCP model has four layers. The relevance is shown like the physical layer and data link layer of the OSI model is directly associated with the network access layer of TCP IP model. Network layer is called as internet layer in the TCP IP model. Transport layer is called as transport and on the other side session, presentation and application all the three layers combined are called as application layers in TCP IP model. So with this diagram we can conclude that the session presentation and application layer this both these three layers are being taken care of by the operating system of the end device whereas physical data link network and transport layer are actually uh, the uh, actually take part in the networking also along with this conclusion one more thing that we can conclude is 
the session presentation and application layer these three layers are whole combined and used in the tcp ip model so basically uh, the tcp ip model uh, handles all the protocols that are there in the application presentation and session layer so <coughs> So from the so from the overall uh, discussion of this slide, we can conclude that OSI model tells us what are the responsibilities of each layer are, whereas TCP/IP model tells us how those responsibilities can be achieved. So that's where the protocols come into picture. So now in case of TCP/IP model, at every layer we have different protocols that executes. Like at internet layer we have. Uh, IP protocol at transport layer we have TCP and UDP protocol and application layer we have a set of some uh, dozens of protocols that executes. These are some of the common protocols that are there with the application layer. So we can have uh, with the application layer uh, the, you know, the the protocols are like domain name system. We have simple mail transfer protocol. We have dynamic host control protocol. We have post office protocol. Uh, also this post office protocol has different versions where like currently we use post office protocol version 3 then we have hypertext transfer protocol and the file transfer protocol with the presentation layer we have different formats of uh, images or different formats of videos that are being there so like we have uh, most commonly used uh, formats of videos like mpeg for images, we have GIF, JPEG, and PNG. So all these three, uh, all these formats are uh, the responsibility of or the protocols that are used by the presentation layer to display the data on the end user's device. These are some of the protocols at glance. So we can see this type of services that are provided at the application layer the protocols that are used to provide those service and the functionality of those protocols. So very first is uh, the name system, how the uh, whenever the user types in the IP address, how the conversion or the resolution of the IP address takes place by the uh, by the device. So for doing it, the protocol used is DNS and the main purpose of this DNS protocol is to translate the domain names, uh, for example, such as cisco.com into IP addresses. So corresponding IP address, which is uh, been allocated for the cisco.com name server will be uh, will be replied, returned to the end device and then the communication can happen similarly we have another service type like host config in host config there are two protocols like boot p and dhcp these two protocols are basically used to provide the uh, allocate the ip addresses to the uh, workstations or the or the or the uh, devices like if we talk about a DHCP protocol, then it is called the full the, the full form is dynamic host control protocol. DHCP is basically used to provide the IP address dynamically. So whenever a client machine uh, comes in in a network and if it does not has a IP address allocated and if DHCP is enabled on that device and also DHCP should be enabled on the network server. So DHCP, as per the DHCP pool, the uh, available IP address will be uh, assigned to that that end device, which whichever comes into the in, into the network. So it it provides a kind of support to reuse the addresses which are no longer needed or which are no longer in use. So this is the concept which is basically used for a wireless uh, wireless routers and wireless communicate wireless lines. Another protocol is BootP protocol. In BootP protocol. Uh, whenever a diskless workstation is discovered, it doesn't have an IP address at the beginning. So whenever the booting process is done, it recovers the IP address and loads it into the machine, machines, uh, machines database. So that is done by a boot P protocol. Another service that is provided is an email service. And for email, we have three different protocols like SMTP, POP and IMAP. SMTP is the very basic protocol which is which stands for simple mail transfer protocol and SMTP is used for transmitting the emails through an email server. It is it, just used to send the mails whereas POC stands for post office protocol it enables the client to retrieve the mails and uh, whenever the ma mails are downloaded from the server the a mail server will delete the copy and the original copy will be stored on the end device. Another protocol is IMAP which is used 
and the imap is a kind of a, a solution to overcome the limitation of pop protocol and imap allows the uh, keeps the copy of the email on the server side as well and the original copy remains with the server and the duplicate copy is stored on the client machine so whenever the user is moving from one location to other location he may be used able to use or retrieve his emails as and when required another service type provided is a file system in file system again there are two different set of protocols one is file transfer protocol ftp and the other one is trivial file transfer protocol tftp ftp is a reliable and connection oriented protocol which uses tcp as a uh, as a support to transmit or to send the request and uh, to send the data so in ftp first the request is sent to establish the connection once the connection is established the user is authenticated then the actual data is transmitted ftp works on two different port numbers uh, port number 20 and port number 21 for port number 20 is used to used used to send the connection control and port number 21 is used to send the actual data tftp on the other hand is a simple and connectionless transfer protocol which uses udp as a basic protocol to transmit its messages so it doesn't uh, has a more overhead as it does not keep track of the session or it does not keep the connection established another service provided is a web service and for web service the protocol uses http which stands for hypertext transfer protocol it's a rule it's a set of rules for exchanging text graphics sound video and other multimedia files over the world wide web so whatever web pages that we see nowadays on the uh, on the world wide web all those web pages are displayed on the user's browser using the http protocol final protocol that we need to discuss is for the service is remote access service and the protocol uses telnet this type of protocol is used to uh, log in to the server or to take the access of the device from any remote location wherever we are so this is a summary of what uh, of the discussion that we had so far so application layer interacts directly with the end devices all the three layers application presentation and session layers are controlled by the operating systems and it provides distinct services to the end users using various protocols